The Sony a7S III has more video codec, format, and frame rate combinations than I've ever seen on any other mirrorless or DSLR camera. This gives you a great deal of flexibility and options to shoot how you'd like, from insanely large bit rates with little compression that make editing on a computer a breeze, all the way to highly compressed, highest quality with many options in between. Today I'll be explaining what video settings the a7S III has, as well as what pros and cons are for each. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Timix Stolars, and just like you, I was extremely overwhelmed with all the file formats and movie settings that the Sony a7S III has. There's 10-bit, 8-bit, 422, 420, H.264, H.265, 24 and 240 frames per second, as well as long GOP and intra-frame compression. There are so many options, and while most combinations work together, some don't that are worth being aware of. Supplemental to regular shooting modes, the a7S III also has a video setting called s &Q, which is in-camera processing of time lapses and slow motion. s &Q has all the same options that regular movie mode does, as well as a few extras, but it does not record audio. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain this as quick and thoroughly as possible. If I missed anything, or if you'd like any clarification, leave your question in the comments below and I will reply to every single one. So here in file formats are the codecs. There is XAVC HS, S, and SI in 4K, as well as HD versions for S and SI. XAVC HS is Sony's new H.265 codec. It's more efficient and has higher compression without any loss in quality when compared to H.264, which is the codec that the rest of these use. XAVC-S is a very standard codec that has been around for a very long time and most cameras have been using it for years. Lastly is XAVC-SI. This is also H.264, however it's the only option that has intra-frame compression when compared to the long GOP compression that both XAVC-S and XAVC-HS have. In extremely oversimplified terms, intra-frame compression saves every frame individually when you're recording video, while long GOP, which stands for group of pictures, saves part of your image that are similar between each frame and groups them together, reducing the file size. Pros and cons for these codecs are that XAVC-HS has the smallest file sizes with the highest quality. As I will show you shortly, the bit rates for HS and S are exactly the same, but being that HS is compressing more data, more information is being stored. The downside is due to its high compression, even the newest and fastest computers have a difficult time editing the files, and there are some issues with playback on PC and Mac as well. XAVC-S is middle ground. It's not insanely compressed, and it's not the highest quality either. Your computer will be able to edit it fairly well, and the file sizes are moderate. Lastly, there's XAVC-SI, the highest bitrate, lowest compression option. Intra-frame compression is used instead of long GOP, which is very easy to edit due to your computer not needing to decode the compressed information. And as each frame is saved individually, the quality between each frame should be greater. This option is the best for video where there is a lot of movement, if you want your machine to be able to edit the footage very quickly without transcoding, and it's also the best for color grading because each frame is saved separately at its highest quality instead of as a group of images that are compressed together. The downside is the insanely massive file sizes that are generated in a very short period of time. Moving on to movie settings is where you can change the bit and frame rate, color depth of 8-bit or 10-bit, as well as chroma subsampling of 422 or 420. As you increase the frame rate, bit rate will obviously go up as you capture more frames per second. 10-bit saves 64 times more color information than 8-bit and has very clear benefits. While 422 has less compression than 420, but its benefits are contested over a little bit more. I've seen arguments online that the quality difference between 422 and 420 is minor, while it creates definite problems for editing and playback. Generally speaking, the higher bitrate and higher chroma subsampling gives you the most latitude when you're color grading, which will let you shift colors more before your footage starts to fall apart and look terrible. The trade-off is larger file sizes, footage that is more taxing on your machine and issues with playback. Here is a list of the frame rates and bit depths for each codec and their corresponding bit rates. As you can see, the achievable bit rates in regular movie mode range from 16 to 600. Each codec has 10 and 8 bit options, but XAVC HS 4K offers the most combinations with it being the only one that lets you pick 10 bit 422 or 10 bit 420. There are three bitrate options, all in 10 bit for XAVC HS, high, medium, and low. 
It's worth noting that the codec only allows for 24, 60, and 120 frames per second with no option for 30. Next is the standard XAVC 4K and HD, which offers 10-bit 422 and a high and low 8-bit 420 with 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second options. Last is XAVC SI 4K or 1080, which automatically locks you in at the highest bit rate of 10-bit 422. 120 frames per second is not available in the regular movie mode, but it is an SNQ. Moving on to SNQ, this mode is by far the most confusing in my opinion. It has a separate tab in the A7S III, but you still need to pick a codec from the file format tab. It actually has almost the exact same bit and frame rates that regular movie mode does, but with a couple extras. These are the ability to shoot 240 FPS in HD, XAVC-S, and SI, as well as 120 FPS in XAVC SI, 4K, and HD. Given that HD means 1080 for every single movie mode on this camera, a rational assumption would be that 240 FPS in HD would also be 1080. Every review I've seen on YouTube and websites state this to be the case, and even when you check on the information tab, it shows the resolution being 1080. However, as I discuss in my Sony A7S III video, this camera can only shoot 240 FPS at a max resolution somewhere between 720 and 1080, unfortunately. As I mentioned, all the bit rates in S and Q are the same as in the movie modes. However, they act a little differently depending on the frame rate you choose. In this option, you have to pick the frame rate that you want the camera to record the video and the frame rate that you want the output to be processed in. For instance, you can shoot 120 FPS and pick a 24 FPS output slowing down your footage right away five times. Or you can choose to shoot in one FPS with 24 FPS output and have a time lapse that is sped up 24 times all right in camera. This is where things get a little bit confusing. Using a 24 FPS output, since that's the most standard, we can see that the bit rates for S and Q are listed the same as in the regular movie modes. However, this is not the true bit rate output because you need to factor in a multiplier. That means for slow motion options, you have to multiply the bit rate by how much the footage is being slowed down or divide the bit rate by how much it is being sped up for time lapses. For instance, a 240 FPS video slowed down to 24 FPS output is being slowed down by 10 times, meaning you need to multiply the bit rate of 89 megabits per second by 10, which gives you 890 megabits per second for the final video. Conversely, for a one FPS video, the footage needs to be sped up 24 times. So you would divide 89 by 24, giving you a tiny bit rate of 3.7 megabits per second. Here's a graph of all the true bit rates for each recording frame rate and a 24 FPS output. You can see the highest achievable bit rate is for XAVC SI 4K 120 FPS at 1200 megabits per second. This is an insanely large bit rate. One last strange thing I want to touch on is memory card options. This camera can accept V30, 60, and 90 cards, which allow for sustained write speeds of 240, 480, and 720 megabits per second respectively, as well as the new extremely fast CF Express Type A cards that have a sustained write speed of 3200 megabits per second. Knowing this information, it is very strange that the A7S III will not let you record any frame rate with a 24 FPS output for a V30 card in XAVC 4K, even though at one frame per second, it's a bit rate of only 4.2 megabits per second. These inconsistencies occur quite a bit for S and Q modes, and I see there's still a lot of questions being asked about which card is required for which movie mode and which frame rate. And as you can see, it's not enough to just look at the bit rate because even if it's well under the limit, the A7S III just won't let you record it without a faster card. So I'm currently running tests on each card that this camera can accept, and I'll be summarizing my findings in my next video that I'll link here once it's up and down below in the description. <sighs> okay, that was a big information dump, but I hope I was able to clear up what video recording combinations are being offered on the A7S III and why you might wanna choose one over the other. As always, thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. I really appreciate you spending this time with me. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will reply to every single one. And while you're down there, hit that like button if you found this information useful. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.